Hi everyone, my name's Kay and I work at Screen Skills. We're delighted that you're joining us this afternoon um, for this workshop of Diamond Diversity Training with Mini Ayres. And Mini, thank you very much um, and over to you. Thanks Kay. Uh, hello everyone. Um, so the whole point of today is a quick quite a quick run through of the diamond system so it's a diversity monitoring system and what we're going to do is we're just going to have a little chat about what it is how it works and um, a quick run through of how you fill in all the forms um, and what your responsibilities are as uh, part of the production team for those of you who have never used it before and in fact haven't used um, diamond before um, or even uh, silver mouse um uh basically here's a little bit of an intro about what diamond is so it's an online diversity monitoring system it's used by all the major broadcasters so bbc itv channel 4 channel 5 sky um and it gives consistent diversity data on all the programs they commission and that is both on screen and off screen um, it's delivered uh, through the Creative Diversity Network and these are the things it collects the information about. So what we're collecting information on are mainly protected characteristics under equalities legislation. So we're looking at gender, gender identity, age, ethnicity, sexual orientation and disability. So that is on and off screen of all UK originated productions. Um, and so that gives us the background of diamond let me just move this on to our next section um, now the important bit on here is um, the section on the third cut so diamond's been running now oh three years and so we're now on our third report um, and this third report we've had so much information come through that it's been able to break it down much more than earlier reports which has been really really helpful showing us where we need to focus so this infographic here is quite helpful, showing us that, for instance, uh, women do make up roughly 50% of the um, workforce, both on screen and off screen. Um, however, very absent from senior creative roles like directors where they're only 26% of directors. Um, we can also see that, for instance, people from BAME ethnicities are more represented on screen, but not behind the camera. Um, and we can also see one of the things we really decided to, to kind of focus on um, this, this time around is looking at the fact that disabled people are underrepresented across the board. Uh, so that gives you a bit of a view of why we need this information to help us kind of target different areas and make sure that uh, we're doing the best we can to make this industry as inclusive as possible. Um, oh, moving on to the next slide. So, here we have the um, main guidelines for each of the channels, uh, each of the broadcasters, sorry. So these are all for off screen. They've got different targets for on screen, but these are the off screen ones. Um, so for instance, with BBC currently, we're looking at 50% female, 8% uh, disability, 15% on BAME, 8% on LGBT. Other Broadcasters have slightly different ways of looking at it. The general rule is that broadcasters are looking to producers to create programmes that are representative of UK society. So that's what we're aiming for. It doesn't kind of, uh, um, uh, even though they've got slightly different ways of wording it, that is what all broadcasters want to see. Um, so this is an overview of how Diamond works. Uh, there's four forms, and these are the contributor form, the diversity perceived form, the diversity actual form, and then the diversity self-declaration form. Now, the reason that's in a different colour is diversity self-declaration form is the form that's filled in by all the people working on the programme. This might be slightly confusing for those of you working in factual programming because we use the term in factual contributor to mean somebody specifically in front of the camera. And within Diamond, when we talk about contributors, we actually mean everybody who contributes to the programme in any way. So that's crew, that's production staff, that's on-screen talent, that's everybody. Uh, so 
stop thinking about how you usually think about the term contributors. In this case, it means everybody. So the first thing you'll have to do as a, usually it's the production coordinator that often does this, uh, sometimes production secretaries, sometimes production managers or JPMs, but it'll be someone within that team. And the first thing you will need to do is fill out the contributor form. This is basically just filling out the name, email address and role of everybody who works on the programme. So everyone on your call sheet, that goes into uh, this contributor form. Um, and then that feeds through into all the other forms. If you get that bit right, I'll keep talking about this as we go through, but if you get that bit right, then you will make your life so much easier as we go through. So focus on the contributor form and everything will flow from there. Um, then this brings us through to the next set of forms. So we have the diversity perceived form and the diversity actual form and the diversity self-declaration form. So all the information you fill out on the contributor form feeds through to the diversity actual form. And this will bring through everyone who works on, on the programme from the information you've put into that original form. This will show you, give you a chance to check you've got all your information right, but it will also show you which of them has filled in their self-declaration form. Now, because Diamond has been going a few years now and we keep diversity self-declaration forms on the system for two years, you may well find that some of your crew have already filled this in before and their information is already there. Um, if not, it will automatically send them out a form to fill in. You will never see that. You don't see any of that information as part of the production. You just know whether they filled it out or not, and you can give them a nudge if not. Um, and then the diversity perceived form is another piece of work you need to do around the finished programme. So perception is really important. What we see on screen is really important. Um, so what we're asking production companies to do is to take their finished programme and watch it as if it's the first time they've ever watched it and then fill in how they perceive diversity on screen. So we'll go into that in a bit more detail later, uh, but again, that's another piece of work that needs to be done by the production management team. Ah, I have a quick question here. Why diversity perceived as important in factual documentaries as people are usually being themselves? That's quite a good question. So, so why is uh, perception important in factual programmes or documentaries? Um, because we're still seeing uh, people on screen and perceived as about who they are as an individual rather than their character, which it is in scripted programmes. So it's all about um, the different kinds of people we see on our screens. And that's just as true in documentaries as it is in scripted. So perception isn't just about their character in a scripted programme. It's also about that person on the screen representing their demographic in factual and documentary programmes as well. Uh, so having a nice, uh, a, a really good range of people on our TV screens is just as important in factual. Um, oh, and somebody has been saying, I've been filling diversity actual in first and then ticking the box on contributors. Is this okay in terms of the process? Um, you can do it that way if you want. The way we're talking about doing it, we just think it's the easiest way, that's all. So. Um, Yes, you can do it the other way around. And as when we get to the diversity actual form, I'll show you, you can fill people in on, on that form. But if, I, um, if you do it from the contributor form first, we find it a bit easier. But obviously your workflow, whatever works in terms of that for you. Um, OK, so let's have a look at this. What we see is step one, the contributor form. OK, so here we go. Um, so. Um, I, what I haven't done here is go into massive amounts of detail about how to log into the system and uh, find the program and all of that because that would just take us all day if we were getting that detailed. So what we'll do after this session is send you a PDF guide to the system that will hopefully answer all those little questions um, about exactly how to log on and how to find your program and the different boxes to fill in. Uh, so this is a, a good overview for us. Um, I just need to move things out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so you can see on this screen at the top, um, this is the contributors form and somebody's filled in one person here so far. So that's, what, that's as far as they've got. Um, so the way to fill it in is 
at that top where it says authors and contributors, there's a box here with role and you find that person's role type. So for instance, here they've selected presenter reporter. Um, so find the role type, maybe it's the director, then type in the person's first name and last name and email address. Um, and then you can click uh, search. Hopefully, because we've now been running for quite a while, uh, that person will already be on the system and you can find them and click that person. If not, then you will have to add them as new. You're not having to add a lot of information. It is just uh, their first name, their last name and their email address. Now, it's, um, it's really important we get their email addresses right, because uh, unfortunately, uh, if we don't have the right email address, nothing else works. So um, we really need that email address to be correct. Um, if you can do a personal email address, that is easiest. But uh, for some people, you will be um, filling in their agency email address, for instance, if you're working on scripted programming, or it's a presenter with an agent, something like that, uh, or occasionally some crew have agents. So you might have an agency email address. If you do have their personal email address, that tends to work better. Uh, but if not, you can use their agent. Um, so then you just click um, confirm and that adds the entry to the form and you repeat that for every single person <laughs> working on that program. Uh, so we get them all coming through here. Um, now that role type list, you can see oh, on our next screen, these diversity role types, uh, we've got pretty much everything. Um, these are the on-screen ones on the right and the off-screen on the left. Um, so you should be able to find exactly the right role type. If not, then find the closest one that makes sense. So for instance, we've got casting producer rather than casting director, but it's a similar kind of role. So put that one in. And then we've got a bit of guidance here, uh, which will also be in the PDF guides that we send you afterwards about how to determine exactly who is a lead actor or an actor supporting role or a background actor um, and, and how you determine that. Um, so that bit's, that bit's really quite straightforward. Uh, it's just about getting everybody on the system. The only question we often have is what if I don't have an email address? Now, hopefully that's going to be very, very rare. Um, you can send it to the, e as I said, the agent's email address. Um, best thing to do is just ask the contributor for their email address and make sure you're kind of getting that up there. If that's really impossible, you absolutely have no email address at all, you can use something called the self-service PDF. Um, one of the suggestions that people said that that might happen in, for instance, was um, if you were doing, say, Vox Pops on the street, uh, not that you'll be doing that right now, but um, <laughs> in normal circumstances, if you were doing Vox Pops on the street, you might not be able to get people's email addresses. You're just getting to sign a release form. So if you can give them a self-service PDF at the same time, then they can take that home and fill that in. So how the self-service PDF works is we're, we're back to the contributors form now, which is where we were before. And um, I've got something in the, in the way. Hang on, I need to move things. Uh, so this is the contributors form and you can see circled in red at the top there, it says uh, self-service PDF and you can click that, print it out and that contains a website for them to go to with a unique production key for that specific program and then that person fills that in and they then can confidentially fill in their diversity information and again you don't see it, it's not that they fill out a form and give it you back, it's all done online confidentially but it doesn't require you to have their email address. Um, hopefully you'll never have to do that, but it is there if necessary. Um, so that's pretty much all the contributor form is. It's just filling in everybody who works on the program on screen and off screen, just their name and email address. So um, hopefully, you know, you'll get into the swing of that and it won't take too long once you get going. Um, so once you've added everybody, there is a very, very important tick box <laughs> because if you don't tick this tick box, then you won't be able to submit it to the broadcaster. So just at the top right hand corner, there's contrib all contributors and their contributions entered. And then you can click submit to broadcaster above it. 
So our main kind of piece of advice here is uh, we feel if you do the contributor form first, it will reduce your workload because um, it will feed everything through to the diversity actual form. They're connected. So all that information pulls through. They're connected the other way as well. So if you fill it in on the diversity actual form, um, it will feed through to the contributors form. But this is, this is I think, the, most, uh, the easiest way to do it. Uh, so if you would do that one first as part of your workflow, then that should help you. Um, so we're moving on now to the diversity actual form. So we filled in all the contributors and then what happens is we open the diversity actual form and we can see all the contributors we've already filled in in the bottom section. So that bottom section is all the ones that are pulled through from the contributors form. Now, what happens with the diversity actual form is it has a placeholder for every single um, role uh, on the production that there could be, uh, every different role type. You will not, it's very rare, I don't think it's ever happened that a production has someone doing every single role type, because obviously there's role types that are specific to factual, there's role types that are specific to um, scripted so you're never going to have every single role type on your program so um, what you can do is once all of the role types you do have all the contributors you do have have been added you can then press exclude that's on the far right hand side you can just see it there it says exclude um, if those roles don't exist within your program they're not relevant it happens sometimes in digital productions. Oh, yes. Uh, plus, there are not the role types to add. That's from Hayley. Um, it, do you mean if the uh, you don't have the... Ah, they're not named on the form. I see what you mean. Um, yeah, so if they're not named on the form, um, sometimes that does happen if, if it's a really quite a specific sort of niche role. Um, then I would try and find something as similar to it as possible. For instance, there's, there's an AP, there's an assistant producer role that just says assistant producer. So maybe if you've got an assistant producer that is specifically casting or is an assistant producer that is specifically um, looking after child licensing, um, then you can add those. So we've got content producer, creative director here. So I would go for those sort of roles with just producer or a director, choose the one that's kind of closest to the role you're looking for. Um, Cause they're the, those creative roles. Okay, that's great. So as you can see, if we filled in all the, um, all the contributors on the contributor form and they've pulled through to this one, uh, then we just need to exclude the other role types. Um, and then we can move forward. So that makes that life very easy there. Um, then what we can see here, so we've pulled everyone through and what I'm focusing on now is these uh, indicators. So you can see they're red and gray here. Red means that indicates that person hasn't returned their diversity self-declaration form. So that's all you can see. You can't see any of their diversity information. You can just see whether they've returned it or not. Um, now, sometimes their link will have expired because they've taken so long to do it. If that is the case, then you can click it to reactivate it and it will resend them a new email. Um, it doesn't matter if people haven't filled it in. Uh, it still means you can send the form to the, you can still submit it to the broadcasters, but obviously we're all doing our best to make sure everybody does fill it in. But we recognize that if you're sort of having to wait for everybody to fill it in, you might never get to send this form through. So you can still send it through even if not everyone's filled it in. Um, and then that's what you do. You submit the form for approval. You click on submit to broadcaster at the top there that's circled in red. Um, uh, and then that is your diversity actual form. So it gives you kind of one more chance just to check you've put everything in right, the emails right, the names right, the role types right, um, and to exclude the role types that are not relevant to your program. And then you can submit that to broadcaster. So um, if you do the contributor form first, then most of the work will have been done for you by the time you come to this section. How long is a reasonable time to hold off before submitting the form if there is a lot of people holding out on filling the form in? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, there will come a point where 
you know, everything has completed on the programme and your contract is coming to an end as production coordinator. And obviously at that point, it's a really good idea to send it off. Um, I would hold off for as long as possible. We're really trying to make sure people do fill it in. And we've got some things a bit later on in the session talking about how we encourage people to fill it in and what, what um, resources are, have been made by Creative Diversity Network to help people understand what it is for. Um, and um, that's really important, I think, is to just give them as long as possible. So please do hold off uh, until as many people as possible have filled it in and then submit to the broadcaster. Uh, we've also got a question saying, is it possible to keep going back and making changes to the form even after clicking submit? Um, you can't do it after clicking submit to broadcaster. So if, if you think you might need to make changes, then I would hold off pressing submit to broadcaster on both the contributor form and this form until you're sure everything's correct. Because you can do changes up until that point. So that's fine. Um, and then we've had a question as well. Does Diamond only cover TV and film or does it extend to commercials, online content and radio productions? Currently, it only covers uh, television. So it covers BBC, Channel 4, Channel 5, Sky and ITV. Um, however, you know, there, it may be that in the future, either Diamond or something similar um, is also available for commercials and online content and radio stroke audio productions as well. But currently it's, it's TV. Um, okay, brilliant. So, uh, well, we've kind of just covered that questions, but if there are any more questions, just keep asking. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, but we'll move on to the next section of the form, just so you know what you are sending out to people, the diversity self-declaration form. So this is the form that gets sent out to all contributors. In fact, as a production coordinator on the programme, you would also get one. Um, you are not responsible or production companies are not responsible for filling out these forms but they are responsible for making sure all the contributors receive a request to fill out the forms by putting their information into diamond so if you put their information into diamond you fill out those two forms we just talked about they will receive this information now the more information we get back the better because it really helps us understand what the current climate is so um we really rely on production companies to encourage people to fill this in and i would say as freelancers yourself please do fill it in when you when you get one on your next job um even if you put prefer not to disclose to every single question that's still it's still helpful um but obviously if you can fill in your diversity information then that's brilliant um so this is the this is the form uh this is just in a sort of pdf but this is basically what you get uh, so it asks your gender and gender identity, it asks your date of birth, uh, your ethnic origin, sexual orientation and disability. These, uh, the breakdown in terms of like ethnicity, sexual orientation, etc. is based on the ONS uh, statistics for like the national census. So it's um, split along similar lines for that in case you're wondering why we kind of alighted on these specific ethnicity breakdowns that that's what it comes from um, and I think one of the key things we have is you know it's really important to show that you've got prefer not to disclose um, but also that we're not kind of making an assumption about what's normal and what's not and that becomes even more important when we move on to the perceived um, form as well um, so that's basically all the questions we're asking uh, people to fill in. And as I said, and another thing to kind of reassure people is that the production company does not see this information. Um, so uh, it's not kind of processed by the production company at all. Um, and this is all confidential. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna try <laughs> we're gonna try this perceived section now. Um, so the diversity perceived form. What do we see and hear on screen? So why do we collect this? So we collect perceived data is to get a clearer understanding of what whether audiences are seeing themselves reflected on screen. So this is why it's important for documentary as well as scripted, um, and whether TV programs are portraying 
UK society as it as it truly looks and all the different groups of people that exist in the UK. Um, you may have seen quite recently ITV have done a, um, a, a new IDENT video and it kind of points out that it's that phrase if you can see it you can be it so people seeing themselves on screen in different roles um, really helps people to understand that that's possible for them and if we only portray one demographic or another demographic on screen then we're doing a disservice to everyone else watching tv um, so that's why this bit's really important if you were doing this for your production company it would have to be the final edit that you were watching so you were seeing exactly what the viewer sees you would have to imagine yourself in the viewer's shoes so it's based purely on your perception of that of what you're actually watching um, so you can't use information you already know about people appearing in the program uh, and you'll realize that when you see it so it's also got to be based purely on the specific episode you're watching so you can't draw on prior knowledge from previous episodes even if it's part of a series we want to uh, do the perception as if this viewer is only watching that program and coming back to this uh, what uh, somebody was asking about earlier when you're filling it, this in for a scripted program, you should be thinking about the character, not the actor. And when you're filling it in for a factual program, you should be thinking about that actual person, that presenter. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> when we're looking at animated characters or robots, for instance, um, record don't know for any diversity characteristics, which there are no clear visual or verbal cues in the program. This is how you add the data. So we're just going to have a quick look at how we do this. Um, so here we go. We're, we're on the diversity perceived form now. This is the other form. And um, as we mentioned earlier, if you filled in the contributors information on the contributors form, all the contributors who have an on-screen role type, so an actor or a presenter or a reporter, will be pulled through automatically onto this screen. Um, so you won't have to add anyone specifically. So here they are, they're all appearing. We've got uh, an actor here, a contributor interviewee, a lead actor, um, and then we've got an actor supporting role, which is open at the top. So this one, you, it basically, you press edit and it opens up the form and you can select the age, the gender, the disability, etc. And you fill in that information there. Um, you do this as you're watching the program now what some people find easier to do um, and i will send this to you afterwards there's an excel spreadsheet with the form on and some people find it easier to fill in the excel spreadsheet as they're watching it and then take that and come back to this form and fill it in online uh, so i will send you over that excel spreadsheet as well because that helps a little bit kind of doing everyone all at once um, so once you've filled in all the perceived information online again you have to tick the um uh, you can submit it by pressing submit to broadcaster at the top. Again, this will only work if you've ticked that tick box on the contributors form saying all contributors added. So you do that and press submit to broadcaster once you're happy with everything. Um, I've also been asked before, if, if it's a series, do we have to watch every single um, episode? And yes, you do. You do a different one of these for every episode. Um, so it does take a little bit of time. So what I would like to ask before we kind of um, uh, stop is just if you have any more questions, just pop them into chat now. Um, we've got one here. How do you do a show where characters age, etc., may change in the course of an episode? That's really interesting. Um, so I suppose it would depend on the show. I mean, if you've got a scripted show where you see somebody as a child and as an adult, you would do them as two separate characters. Um, so something like that. I suppose in a show where somebody has a birthday, you do it at the end, at the date they are at the end of the show, I think. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if they are really literally showing them in two different ages and there's two different actors playing them, then, um, or even if there isn't, if they're really obviously different ages and it's different timelines, I would do them as two characters, uh, you know, young Mark and older Mark. Um, and we've had a question here as well. In the past, I've had contributors who didn't make the final cut uh, through to the perceived form who didn't make the final cut filter through to the perceived form despite ticking the box not in final program or whatever it's called do you know why this is or have any tips 
So they only need to be on there um, for the on screen if they if uh, you only need to fill them in on the perceived if they're actually on the final um, edit of the program. If they're a contributor who is on there, but they didn't make the final edit of the program, then they shouldn't pull through to the to the form. If you're having difficulty with that, my tip would be to um, uh, ask Silvermouse. Uh, there is some technical. There's a technical email you can email for that. I'll just look it up for you, and you can email them with technical questions. Um, here we go. Silvermouse help desk at silvermouse.com. Uh, so if you're having any technical issues while you're using it, that's the email address. Um, how do you do a flashback that has a character arc? So as we were saying with the, with the scripted programs with flashbacks, that treat them as two separate characters um, if there's a big age difference between them. Um, but I hope that's demystified it a bit. And uh, next time you're applying for a role, you can go, yeah, I know what I'm doing with Diamond. That's great. <laughs> uh, that's the plan. Um, but thank you very much for coming on and uh, right at the end of the day as well. Um, so I hope you all have a lovely evening.